as we enter into a new church year. Again, thank you to all those that uh, helped get everything set up and prepared for this first Sunday of Advent. Our Christmas trees are up. The second Sunday of Advent, they will be lit. Then the third Sunday of Advent, they will be decorated. That's the schedule. We'll see if that works out. That's the plan. Today, we also begin the tradition of lighting our Advent wreath. The four candles, by tradition, represent those 400 400 years of silence between the last Old Testament prophecy and the beginning of John preparing the way. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The season of Advent is a time of a call to repentance, the focus preparing our hearts for the coming Savior. And so our, our theme highlights that. So we have these four candles leading up to the Christmas celebration. Our first candle by tradition known as the prophecy candle or the hope candle. Those two come together, right? The prophecies, the promises, putting forth the hope for the people to know that God proclaimed and said, yes, the Savior is coming. That same truth is there for us also. He's coming. He's coming again. May our hearts be alert, ready, and watching, and that'll be part of our focus today as well. We'll begin then with lighting that first Advent candle on our Advent wreath as we ask God's guidance and blessings on our worship and on our preparation today and in the coming days in this Advent season. May God be with us and bless us. We turn to page two in the service folder. We'll continue now with that opening invocation. Asking God's blessings, His presence, we begin. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, we confess our sins to you. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go to our Lord with the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Protect us by your strength and save us from the threatening dangers of our sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn our focus now to our Scripture readings for this first Sunday of Advent, the first lesson taken from the prophet Isaiah. Again, this assurance, this reminder of a a, a gracious God who will seek us out. We read from Isaiah 63 and also chapter 64. But you are our Father, though Abraham does not know us. Though Israel does not acknowledge us, you, the Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from everlasting is your name. Why do you cause us to wander from your ways, Lord? Why do you harden our hearts so that we do not fear you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that are your heritage. Oh, that you would rip open the heavens and come down. Mountains then would quake because of your presence. As fire ignites stubble and as fire makes water boil, make your name known to your adversaries. Then nations would quake in your presence. You did amazing things that we did not expect. You came down. Mountains quaked because of your presence. 
From ancient times no one has heard, no ear has understood, no eye has seen any God except you who goes into action for the one who waits for him. You meet anyone who joyfully practices righteousness, who remembers you by walking in your ways. But you were angry because we sinned. We have remained in our sins for a long time. Can we still be saved? All of us have become like something unclean, and all our righteous acts are like a filthy cloth. All of us have withered like a leaf, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is no one who calls on your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. So you hid your face from us. You made us melt by the power of our guilt. But now, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. All of us are the work of your hand. Here ends that Old Testament reading. Turn our attention to the epistle lesson today, Paul's letter to the Corinthians. His first letter, we begin the opening verses of that letter, reading verses 3 to 9. His, again, acknowledgement, his acclamation, that greeting that we are also used to. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of the grace of God given to you in Christ Jesus. You were enriched in Him in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because the testimony about Christ was established in you. As a result, you do not lack any gift as you eagerly wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also keep you strong until the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Here ends the epistle lesson. For those that are able, I invite you to please stand for our gospel reading today. Dear friends, we stand in respect to the Holy Gospel our Lord gives us through the Gospel writer Mark, reading the 13th chapter, verses 32 to 37. This also serves as our sermon text for today. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Watch, be alert and pray, because you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going away on a journey. When he left his home, he put his servant in charge and he assigned what each one was to do. He also commanded the doorkeeper to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or early in the morning. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, keep watch. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, dear friends. As I mentioned, the word of our Lord upon which we want to base our sermon meditation on this first Sunday of the church here, the first Sunday of Advent, is the Gospel lesson taken from the Holy Gospel of St. Mark. We read again those verses, chapter 13, verses 32 to 37. Jesus speaks to us here. He says, No one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Watch, be alert and pray, because you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away on a journey. When he left his home, he put his servants in charge and assigned what each one was to do. He also commanded the doorkeeper to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or early in the morning. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, keep watch, keep watch, keep watch. 
This is the word of our Lord, your friends. Kind of shocking, surprising, isn't it? A new church here has begun today. The Christmas trees are up here at church. They'll be lit next Sunday. They'll be decorated the following Sunday. In your homes, maybe, after Thanksgiving, maybe already this weekend, you began putting up the Christmas decorations. Fall, Thanksgiving, all that's getting pushed to the side. And here we go. Be a challenge. For some, it doesn't quite feel like Christmas because they're waiting for the snow and the cold to come in, but that doesn't happen here in Florida. Yay. But we still got to get ready. Right? The season of Advent is there. We have our Advent wreath. Right? The progression of that. Maybe some of you follow that tradition in your house. The, the Advent calendars. There's all different plays on that too. Sometimes those different variations come around because people so quickly get bored. Oh, it's that again. Oh, it's that again. Right. But this is where again today we pause for a moment and we marvel at the awesomeness, the love and the care, the true care Of our God? It's the traditional gospel reading for the first Sunday in Advent following the ILCW series B. We follow a series. We follow a prescribed series so that pastors don't get caught up in just randomly going. We follow a series of, of assigned readings that highlight the church year. This this is the gospel reading that's being used in the majority, not all, but the majority of our Wells congregations today. Some might be following a different series. Some follow sermon series and other things going on also. But for the, the most part, the majority, we're using this assigned reading from Mark 13. And we think, yep, yep, there it is, it's Advent, there's the message, keep watch. Why? Because Advent means He's coming. Advent means the idea He's coming. Right? And so, oh, okay, it's that. But, friends, it's a lot more. And, and that's why we're focusing in on this theme today. Yes, it's Advent. And what does Advent mean? Advent means you. Advent means You. God's talking to you. Christ is coming to each and every one of you today. And to me. With these words. And and, and we see it when we just slow down for a moment and don't just simply read the Gospel reading and go, oh yeah. He says, yeah, it's like that owner that goes away and he's going to come back until he comes. Keep watch, keep watch, keep watch. Friends, it's so much more. And this Advent means... You, it's it's, it's God coming to us in these caring, loving words. And He says, I want you to be ready. You to be ready. And this is how. Let's take a look at this story. Let's take a look at this parable. It's like a man going away on a journey. When he left his home, he put his servants in charge, and he assigned what each one was to do. Do we hear that? This isn't just, okay, he's come back, so be ready when he comes back. There's something important that we need to highlight here. There's something important that Jesus is wanting us to know. And and why we can properly say Advent means you. It isn't just a season. It isn't just an excuse to light pretty colored candles and to put up Christmas decorations and get ready to exchange presents. The season of Advent is for each and every one of us to get ready. To prepare our hearts. And we have these traditions, we have these symbols and these reminders to assist us in that. But the truth is highlighted in these wonderful, powerful, directive, encouraging words for us. 
And yes, the overriding message is, hey, let's be alert. Advent is for you because you are to be alert. You are to be aware. It is time to wake up. Is that what God's been doing these last couple of months? Waking people up? Part of me thinks so. But we also recognize that it ties in with what he tells us in Romans 8.28, that all things work together. God's got a purpose. He's got a way of making all things come together and work out. Yeah, even a pandemic. Things changing in our lives, personally, locally, nationally, different things going on. And all of a sudden we kind of go, whoa, is that the hand of God? For me, for you as Christians, we better nod our heads and say, yeah, because God cares about us. And He wants us to be alert. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to know every day can be your last day. It can't be that quick. And whether it's because the Lord's deciding to come today, all together, or is He going to call you or you or you? And I'm not pointing to anybody here today. It can happen. keeping the Jim and Keith Hartman family in our prayers. Kind of a double whammy message this week. Keeping their Keith's brother, Jim's one son, hospice home care is coming in. Days are getting numbered very quickly, which is a blessing because of much of what he is suffering and battling with. And yet in the midst of this, Keith shared he got a call that his 60-year-old cousin, Gone. Heart attack, just like that. We're keeping Gary Swanhart in our prayers as his mom is over in the Tampa Clearwater area, St. Pete area, in hospice. Final days. But Gary warned me, he said, it might be a while because she's a fighter. We all get that, right? But we we don't know. We don't know. Right? It could be something that's set up because the health issues and the progression of a disease is hitting us and we're going and we're seeing days are being numbered or all of a sudden we're just gone. Or, as the Scriptures keep telling us, He can come back any day. Even while He was in that state of humility here on earth, He didn't know that part. He surrendered. Jesus wasn't going to leave any clue. He did not leave a clue here on earth. He didn't even whisper to the angels and say, hey, for those people we really care about, you're their guardian angels, you go down and tell them it's going to be this day. Jesus is very specific. The angels don't know. Even while He was humble here on earth, He didn't know. He couldn't give a clue. We don't know the day. But what we do know... What we do know, it's coming. And God doesn't want you and I caught unaware. He's telling us, be alert. So Advent means you. It means you need to be alert. But it's something so much more. And this is where we don't want to lose that message in the call of, hey, wake up, hey, watch out. Do we hear what Jesus is telling us and using this parable and putting you And I in this parable today, when he left his home, he put his servants in charge and assigned what each one was to do. We have responsibilities. Advent means you because you're to be responsible. He's assigned you tasks. You're part of that servanthood. You have roles. You have responsibilities. He's given us a purpose because He cares about us. He's given you opportunities to serve Him. This isn't a a servanthood of slavery and misery. 
Brothers and sisters, this is a, an opportunity and a reminder for us to see the responsibilities that God gives to us. You have a purpose, each and every one of you. Every day of your lives, even though maybe some of those responsibilities have changed. Some have gone from being parents to grandparents to even great-great-great-great-grandparents. Gone from having a role of working in an industry, having responsibilities to being retired. But I've seen enough of those retired folks. And, you know, there's that statement that retirement just means another way to get tired. Right? Because we stay perfect. And why is that? Because God gives us responsibilities. And some of those stages in life, maybe those responsibilities aren't as pressure-packed or intense as they are at other times. But God in love is coming to us and saying, you're you're these servants in this household and you've each been assigned a task. You have a responsibility. Sometimes we have to pause and look in the mirror and be be reminded of that. Look at ourselves. Look at yourself. See, God's got a purpose for me here. There might be days I don't really understand what it is or even more so we might want to Resist or fight against those responsibilities because I'd rather do those responsibilities. But that's where we let Paul's words come in and echo in our heads when we have those struggles. I've learned the secret of being content. Right? Sometimes you have to pause and just be content. And I think that comes in when we just stop, take a breath. And let your loving Lord speak to you in these words today and say, you're my servant. I have assigned you some tasks. And I'm coming back. I am returning and I want to see you faithful. I want to see you being responsible in your role as one of my servants, one of my Christians. I want to see you living your faith, letting that light of faith shine. I want to, I want to see you showing that Christ-like love in everything you do, whether it's at work, in your neighborhood, in your homes, with your spouse, with your children, whatever it is. God has blessed us with that love. We know what love is because He first loved us. He wants us to show that Christ-like love in everything we do. That's your role. And that role is connected with whether you're a, a dad or a mom a husband, a wife, a grandparent, an uncle, an aunt, a boss, a manager, a worker, a neighbor, a brother or a sister. You you have these opportunities. You have these assigned tasks that are there. You have responsibility. And God in these words is coming to us and saying, you got something to do until I come back. It's not like we're all going to just sit around and say, oh, I'm so bored. When's he going to come back? i got nothing to do. you got plenty to do. We all know we do. He gives you those opportunities. He gives you those responsibilities because he loves you. He loves you. He doesn't want you getting caught thinking, I got no purpose. Right? Sometimes that can be a challenge, right? We get to a certain stage in life, we get to a certain point, we start to think, I got no purpose. Don't let Satan lie to you. You've got a purpose. If God's given you this day, you've got a purpose. And if that purpose is to simply let the love of God show in your life as you show that Christ-like love to those around you, then let that be your responsibility. Let that be your goal because that is probably one of the most greatest, important task assignments our Lord gives to us. 
And on top of that, we've got to take care of stuff. We have to be good managers. We have to be good stewards of all that he blesses us with. And it all comes together, and we are reminded as we enter into this new church year, and we hear this Advent call, keep watch, be alert. It's with that reminder because you've got a responsibility. You've got tasks. You have assignments. Maybe sometimes we just have to pause. We have to remember, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God does have things for me to do. I've got quite a prayer list right now of people I can be keeping in my prayers. I've got my Fran. Remember that? Fran, F-R-A-N. Friends, relatives, associates, and neighbors. That's your network of folks that you can be making bridges and working with to remind them that Jesus loves them too. Are you praying for them? Are you talking with them? Or have you maybe gotten kind of frustrated, exasperated, saying, ah, no use? Friends, until the Lord returns... Until He does come back that day, you have that responsibility. Advent is about you. It's about God loving you and caring for you. It's about God coming to you and saying, I need you. Which, again, boggles my mind. He doesn't have to need us. He's chosen to use us. He's chosen to call us, to make us His own. And to give us these blessings. And He's loved us enough to give us a purpose. That as we wait for His return, we don't sit idly by, twiddling our thumbs, saying, just waiting for God. Just waiting for God. Still waiting for God. we got things to do. And part of that, is with an expectant heart, right? Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or early in the morning. If he comes suddenly, don't let him find you sleeping. Advent means you because you are to be expecting, right? To be that expectant Christian. Okay, every day. Every day, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And if He gives us tomorrow, we say the same thing. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Next day, same thing. Knowing, okay, this is the day He's given to us. And this might be the day the Lord's coming. But the Lord knows us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows how quick we can get bored with things. So we change things up. Might change up things. I, I can remember, I've been around long enough to remember Advent was so tied in with Lent. We didn't do blue, we did purple. Liturgical color with Advent, was right in connection with Lent. We were, it was purple. But now we've gone with blue because the expectant king is coming back. It's a tradition. It's a custom. There isn't anything in the Bible that says it has to be this way or that. And I think it's done for a purpose, and I pray it's always done to the glory of God. Let it be. And when we maybe forget that, then it's time for us to refocus so that we are expecting the Lord's return. And we're showing that by being responsible in all we do, in each and every role and task He gives to you. And that is your life. God is that intertwined and connected with you because He loves you and He cares about you. Christ came to be our Redeemer. And He doesn't want us losing and forfeiting that gift by getting lost in the mundane, routine, boredom. 
That's not God. That's me. That's my sinful flesh. He comes to us again in love and mercy today. He says, keep watch. And look, I care about you. I care about you. I want you ready. I want you alert. I want you to know I love you. And I've got a purpose for each and every one of you today and tomorrow and the next day and for however many days, weeks, and months He grants to us. And when Satan tries to lull us into a boredom sleep, wake up! Be alert! And see, we do that by doing ministry. By being here. By providing and sharing this message. By reminding each other of God's incredible grace, of His plan for each and every one of us. So let's wake up. Let's be alert. Let's be ready. And let's do it with a joyful heart. Because our Lord loves us. He truly does. He loves you because Advent is for you. Amen. May that peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Turn to page 7. We continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed as we make confession of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue with our prayers again, that reminder that uh, during this time our practice is to encourage our members to give their offerings of love and thanks as you either come in or as you depart. The offering plates are there on the stands back by the door, uh, so just that direction. We go to our Lord now in prayer. Come, dear Savior, we do long for your appearing. Come to cheer us with your promises as you once cheered your ancient people throughout their long night of waiting and watching. Come to restore our hope. Rouse us from the slumber of despair and lift our hearts from petty earthbound goals and direct our eyes above from where you will soon come to make all things right again. Come and work in us a godly grief and a genuine sorrow over our sins Then forgive us for the shameful way that we have dishonored you and the shabby way we have dealt with one another. Through your mighty word, may you stir up in us a ceaseless yearning to give ourselves to others as you have given yourself for us. Help us to recognize those assigned tasks, those responsibilities, that purpose that you have given to each of us. Lord, may you also come and rekindle our joy as we prepare to celebrate your first coming. Do not permit a frenzied busyness to rob us of your peace, or to deprive us of times to ponder and to wonder at your word. Set our hearts apart from the bustle and clamor and the jostle of these days. Instead, may you fill us with the quiet delight of finding you in the manger, and keep hearts and minds undisturbed, through the great throng that streams by uncaringness. We pray also for those enduring great sorrow, for those undergoing spiritual trial, and for those whose restless hearts have no knowledge of your coming. May you comfort, strengthen, and illumine them with the sweet peace born of your love. 
and keep them in the way of peace by your holy word. Lord, we do ask that you would be with the Hartman family. Both they, they deal with uh, Keith's brother in his final days and ask, Lord, your, your caring, comforting, strengthening hand be upon the family as they deal with his disease and sickness raging through his body and also as they deal with the sudden loss of that family member. May you give them the comfort and assurance that only the resurrection and that empty tomb that you gave to us all through your triumph over Satan, sin, and the sting of death. May that truth give comfort to them all. And may it be a reminder for us that we treasure and respect each day that you give to us as it is a gift from you. And may we again express our trust and our love as we walk in all faithfulness. Lord, we pause here now and bring you our own personal, private petitions. Come quickly, dear Lord, and fill our longing eyes with the light of your coming. We wait, we keep watch, and in you we put our hope as we join in that prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptations and challenges. And bestow on us your saving peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We turn to that closing hymn. hymn four. Six. When we think about this world in a final way And we think about our Lord Coming on that day Remember Christ died for our sin Our Lord, our faith, where we begin To know how sinful man has become that the word of God only falls on some may we serve and obey may we thank God each day Jesus the answer above.